<laughs> Thank you. Flying is a dream of humankind since thousands of years, probably since ever. And it's already in the Greek, Greek mythology where Icarus and Daedalus went flying and Icarus fell down from the sky because he was getting too close to the sun. It was only 1,700 years later when Leonardo da Vinci was the first designing a system which might have the potential to fly. However, it took another 400 years until the Wright brothers were able to really fly with a human airplane. Today, we arrived in the age of drones. We have millions of drones sold every year. Drones allow us to get the perspective of a bird, to, f to feel like a bird, even if you are standing on ground. I'm Ron Sigward. I'm doing research at ETH on flying and mobile robots, and I'm very passionate about flying robots. So let me tell you the story how we actually got involved into robots. So we started when I still was at EPFL with very small robots. At this time, it was the, probably the smallest robot on Earth, which was propelled by small, uh, Swiss watch motors. What we realized with these very small robots is that as soon as they have a tiny little, little stone, they are actually a huge obstacle for these robots. And if you look into nature, if creatures are getting smaller, typically there is a much higher chance that they are flying and not walking anymore. So we equipped our small tiny robot with two propellers, so which allows them, should allow them to fly. And actually, it was lifting off the ground, but on the other side, it was not really stable. It was not ag um, agile. But what this experience really did is that triggered our fascination and dedication for flying robots. So we did a deep, di deep dive in looking into new concepts, how we can fly. And in 2004, we have generated the first quarter of flying robot in worldwide, which was stably flying in the air. This was actually the spark for all which came later on in the last, last decade, all this development towards co consumer and professional flying robots. But there was more, more to think about. Fix, uh, helicopters, quadrotors, they are limited in flight time, but they are also dangerous if they fly over people. So our students designed this sky flying robot, which combines the lighter of air system of balloons with propellers like you see it on the quarter tour, which allows them really to fly over people and take pictures from the air or entertain people. This system was then carried on by our students is now, and is now used for film, filming from the air and actually also for, for entertainment. But balloon types or airship type flying robots are somewhat limited by their sensitivity to wind, and they are not very slow in movement. So they cannot cover large areas. So we ask us our quest the question, can we actually build an airplane which can cover extremely large areas and probably can ever stay forever in the air? And so we designed a solar airplane, which in 2008 was the first time to demonstrate with a small airplane that you can fly more than 24 hours. In 2015, with the airplanes you see now on this video, we showed them that we can fly nearly a week. We flew 81 hours. This type of airplanes allows to really cover huge spaces. And in 2017, we had a mission with our Earth scientists to measure um, glaciers in Greenland. However, there is still some limitations. Helicopters have the advantage that can vertical take off, but they're highly inefficient. Fixed-wing airplanes are extremely efficient, but they need runways. So our students designed something which is a hybrid between both. So it's a system which has two propellers and two flaps. It's a wing-only flying system, which can get off the ground vertically and can switch over then to a horizontal flight. With these type of systems, you can actually cover large areas. You can, in contrast to helicopters, which fly somewhat like 10, 15 minutes, fly about an hour and cover large areas for 
aerial imaging or for agriculture. But if you've seen all these aerial vehicles we have seen are actually getting as far away from structures. So flying is typically in the open space. But imagine if you would have flying system which also can also go in contact with the environment, which can fly extremely close to infrastructures. As you can see here, what humans do. So this actually triggered us our last challenge, building flying robots which can not only fly in the open space, but actually cl can fly in all directions with all arbitrary orientation, can be equipped with robot arms, and can then interact with the environment. And this system, we call it Voliro, allows to fly in all directions. It has, in contrast to standard multicopters, propellers or rotors, which can be turned around the central axis. And this decouples the translation with orientation, which it uh, additionally allows actually um, generating forces in all directions and opens a totally new field of applications for drones. You can imagine to use this for spraying um, and cleaning facades. You can imagine to use this to inspect and repair um, wind turbines. Or, as you can see it here on the image, you can use it, in, hopefully in the future, to spray concrete on very light structures um, in architect architecture. It's a great pleasure and honor to show you our system, Voliro, the first time on stage here at TEDx, um, with the help of my collaborators. So let me first show this basic principle. So it looks, in principle, like a standard quarter to a helicopter. But as soon as you turn it around, you can see that the propellers can actually rotate around their axis. This allows the helicopter to really move in all directions, and if equipped with an arm, also generate force in all directions. So we'll now see a first flight which demonstrates that this is really different than a standard helicopter because you can fly up, you can stay horizontal, and then you can actually um, also move in all different directions. Please stack. As you can see, if it's flying horizontal, it has not a tilt to move forward and backward, it just rotates the individual propellers. And as you can see, it can fly in all directions, so it can actually get in touch with walls, face a robot arm towards the wall, and actually interfere at different um, situations. This helicopter has also a very high payload. You can see it has, on each unit, two propellers so that you can really increase the, the payload um, and, the and also then really have strong interaction force with the environment for future applications. Thanks very much for the demonstration and thanks very much for your interest.